Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, May 12th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin our reading today with Psalm 93. Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, enveloped in strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. Your throne has been established from the beginning. You are from eternity. The floods have lifted up, Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their pounding waves. Greater than the roar of a huge torrent, the mighty breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is majestic. Lord, your testimonies are completely reliable. Holiness adorns your house for all the days to come. Yesterday, we heard how Moses, at the Lord's command, sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan to see what it was like and to see what the people were like. Unfortunately, 10 out of those 12 spies came back with an unfavorable report, and the people of Israel are going to listen to that unfavorable report instead of listening to Joshua and Caleb, who encouraged them to trust in the Lord's promise that he was going to give them this land. Unfortunately, the people of Israel are going to suffer horrible consequences as a result of this rejection of the land that the Lord had promised to give them. Then the whole community broke into loud cries, and the people wept that night. All the Israelites complained about Moses and Aaron, and the whole community told them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to die by the sword? Our wives and children will become plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let's appoint a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole assembly of the Israelite community. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who scouted out the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite community, The land we passed through and explored is an extremely good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land a land flowing with milk and honey, and give it to us. Only don't rebel against the Lord, or, and don't be afraid of the people of the land, for we will devour them. Their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. While the whole community threatened to stone them, the glory of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tent of meeting. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people despise me? How long will they not trust in me despite all the signs I have performed among them? I will strike them with a plague and destroy them. Then I will make you into a greater and mightier nation than they are. But Moses replied to the Lord, The Egyptians will hear about it, for by your strength you brought up this people from them. They will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, they have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, how you, Lord, are seen face to face, how your cloud stands over them, and how you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. If you kill this people with a single blow, the nations that have heard of your fame will declare, since the Lord wasn't able to bring this people into the land he swore to give them, he has slaughtered them in the wilderness. So now, May my Lord's power be magnified just as you have spoken. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in faithful love, forgiving iniquity and rebellion. But he will not leave the guilty unpunished, bringing the consequences of the father's iniquity on the children to the third and fourth generation. Please pardon the iniquity of this, this people in keeping with the greatness of your faithful love, just as you have forgiven them from Egypt until now. The Lord responded, I have pardoned them as you requested. 
Yet as I live, and as the whole earth is filled with the Lord's glory, none of the men who have seen my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tested me these ten times and did not obey me will ever see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who despised me will see it. But since my servant Caleb has a different spirit and has remained loyal to me, I will bring him into the land where he has gone and his descendants will inherit it. Since the Amalekites and Canaanites are living in the lowlands, turn back tomorrow and head for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. The material possessions that we have are indeed great blessings from the Lord, that the Lord wants us to use for his glory. Unfortunately, those same things can become idols for us. In our reading for today, Jesus warns against prioritizing those material things over our relationship with him. A ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. I have kept all these from my youth, he said. When Jesus heard this, he told him, You still lack one thing. Sell all you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. After he heard this, he became extremely sad because he was very rich. Seeing that he became sad, Jesus said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Then who can be saved? He replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Then Peter said, look, we have left what we had and followed you. So he said to them, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left a house, wife, or brothers or sisters, parents or children because of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times more at this time and eternal life in the age to come. Then he took the twelve aside and told them, see, we are going up to Jerusalem. Everything that is written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished, for he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked, insulted, spit upon, and after they flog him, they will kill him, and he will rise on the third day. They understood none of these things. The meaning of the saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.